Today, we'll be learning how you can get these particles to form any shape or logo of your choice. We'll be using a text and something useful for all of you, such as 2024, so that you can use it in your New Year's videos. However, you can use any SVG and we'll go through how as we begin the video right now. So in our default scene, we're going to go ahead and press X and delete our default cube. Then we'll press Shift A and search for a mesh circle, which is from where all of our particles are going to be emitted. So we'll press S and then just scale it up by something like five units. And then we'll press tab to go into edit mode, press E to extrude and hit enter. So now there's a copy of every single one of these points at the same place. So we can just scale them down by a little bit to create a plane from which all the particles are going to be emitted. We can press tab to go back into object mode. Then we can go ahead and press this particle properties and press the plus to add a new particle system. Now we're going to require a huge number of particles. So we'll go ahead and bump this up to something like 50,000 and it's going to start on the first frame itself, but we can stop emitting new particles within like 150 frames. However, the lifetime has to be fairly large. So we'll go with 250 and we can increase the lifetime randomness all the way to one. If you actually play the animation, you see that all the particles are falling down and that's because we have gravity turned on. So we have to go down to the field weights over here, expand it and switch gravity off by sliding it down to zero. So if you go back to frame zero, now you see all of them slowly fall down. So they're still falling down, but we want them to go up. And that's because if you actually go to the velocity, you see it has a normal velocity of one meter per second. Now you can fix this one meter per second by either keeping it like this and pressing RX 180 so that they all go up, or you can keep the rotation as is and just change the normal velocity to minus one meter per second. And that way it'll go up instead. So it's really up to you as to how you wish to change this. But the main point is that you need these particles to be going upwards. After that, you can go ahead and add in some turbulence to make them go in a non-uniform manner instead of going uniformly up as it is right now. So to do that, we can press Shift A and search for a force field and just choose turbulence. And here, if you go to the physics properties with the turbulence empty selected, you can go ahead and increase the strength up maybe something like 10, and of course, increase the flow to maybe something like three so that they all stick fairly together. So now if you go back to frame zero and just play the animation, you can start seeing how it's actually forming these weird, nice shapes due to the turbulence and the flow. So this is happening, but we need them to actually form the word. So to do that, if you have a word, you can go ahead and press shift A and just add in a text, which is what we will be doing. But in case you have some sort of a logo, you can click file import SVG. So scalable vector graphics, this particular option, and then search for your SVG logo and use that. If you want to see a more detailed tutorial of how to use SVGs, you can check the one on the top right corner right now. Once you've added in the text, you can go to the text properties over here, change the alignment under paragraph from horizontal left to center, and even the vertical can be shifted to middle. After that, we're going to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees and then grab it on the z-axis to just bring it up. And then you can press tab to edit the actual text. And if that's not working, you can always use the drop down menu up here. And then we're going to change it from text to 2024. The reason why I'm doing 2024 is so that it's useful for all of you as well. And if you want the video, you can go ahead and check out my Patreon where I give every single one of the animations that I create on this channel over there, along with the blend files and wallpapers. So you can see which tire suits your requirements. If at all, you feel like the videos are worth it. Once you have 2024 written, we want to change the font to make it something better. So again, in the text properties, you can go down to font and just click this button and open the windows fonts folder and search for your font. I'm going to use answer, which is a font that you have to download separately. Once you have the font set, we require two of these one to actually attract the particles around the edges and one more, which is going to have the particles on the faces itself. So we can press shift D to duplicate it. And for now, we'll hide the second copy that was created by pressing this eyeball and camera buttons over here so that we have just the first text. Now this text, we don't need it to be a plane. We require it to be a curve. So to do that, we have to select it, go to object, convert to curve. And once it's a curve under the curve settings, you can go to the film mode and change it from both to none. And that way we have just the outline curve. Now you could get this outline from using a text, but what you wouldn't be able to do is going to the physics properties and converting this to a force field, but having the shape as curve. If it was still a text, you would not be able to change the shape to a curve. So now that it's a curve, we have to change the strength from one to minus 
minus 10 so that it becomes attractive and increase the flow as well to something like 3. So now you can go to frame 0 and just play the animation and you should be able to see all the particles slowly migrate towards the actual text and once they reach the text they should start following the actual curve of the text. Now the actual particles are fairly large right now so you can't see it too well but we'll fix that as soon as we give it an object. Right now we're just testing out that it is approximately going in the right method which it is so we're happy with that. So now you can go back to frame zero and press shift a and search for a mesh icosphere and then press gx and just grab it to the side then with our circle selected under the particle settings you can go all the way down to render and expand it and change render as halo to render as object and decrease the scale even lower maybe 0 0.01 increase the scale randomness all the way to one and for the instance objects you can go ahead and choose the icosphere and then you see how the particles become much smaller and that looks a lot nicer for my animation. The next thing is switching off show emitter for the render as well as for the viewport. So just expand viewport, switch off show emitter and then if you go back to frame zero and play it, you won't see the emitter and you'll only see the particles coming out of nowhere. After that we actually require the particles to be present in the center of these texts as well because if you actually look at it right now, when the particles reach the curves, they're going to follow just the edges of the curves. And so you might be able to tell what the text is even without the overlay, but evidently it's not good enough. The two is fairly well done, but the zero, you can't see the inner curves here. The two is getting too much influence from the four. So the particles are going into four and it's fairly randomly distributed at the moment. So we have to fix that. So for that, we can use text 001. So we'll go ahead and unhide it. If you actually select the text and convert it to a mesh to add a particle system, because you can't add a particle system to a curve or a text object, you have to go to object, convert to mesh, and then you go into the edit mode. You see the faces have uneven distribution. So you have many faces over here, less faces over here. This one has really few faces around this region. So we have to fix all of that as well. To do that, we'll go to the modifiers and add in a remesh modifier. We can keep it at voxel itself and just reduce the voxel size to maybe 0 0.03. And of course, that's still not sharp enough. So we'll reduce it even further. Maybe go to 0 0.003. And once you have that, it's fairly smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this modifier. So once it's applied, if you tab to go into edit mode, you can see how we have equally spaced faces, which is exactly what we wanted. Of course, this is very dense, but that's all right. Now we can add in a new particle system. So go to the particle systems, press this plus icon, and then increase the number again, fairly large. So I'll go with 25,000. And this time I wanted to start when these other particles start reaching the text. So I can see that these particles are reaching the text at about frame 115. So I'll have the start at frame 115 and the end frame for actually emitting it can be even further. So I want it to be a 10 second long animation at 30 frames per second. So I'll end it at 250. Now the lifetime has to be long enough so that the particles don't start disappearing before it ends. So I'll keep the lifetime at 200 maybe and lifetime randomness can be set all the way to one as well. So a few particles will start disappearing just at the end of the video, but that's all right. If you don't want that, just increase the lifetime, make it something like 400. You can reduce the lifetime randomness as well to zero. That way all the particles will be present. Once you're done with that, under the velocity, we don't want it to start moving. So we're going to change that to zero and all all the way under the render properties, we're going to render it as the same object. So object and switch off show emitter. Make sure that the scale is the same as what we've set for the previous version. So 0.01 scale randomness all the way to one instance object has to be our icosphere and under viewport display switch off show emitter as well. And finally, for the field weights, switch off gravity as well as all so that it doesn't get attracted to the sides or face the turbulence. So that settles all of the necessary adjustments that are to be made. But I want these particles that are going around to also die out a little earlier because if you actually look at it, there's way too many particles getting formed and getting stuck towards these sides. So just play around with the particle settings. So I'll go to circle and just decrease the lifetime from 250 down to maybe 200 and that should be all right. Now you can go ahead and bake 
the actual simulation. So go down to the cache settings and just click bake. And once this circle finishes baking, you can go ahead and select text 001 and hit bake. But remember, there's one mistake that we did, which was we didn't set the end frame correctly. So ideally, before you hit the bake for either of them, go ahead and change all of your render defaults. So here we're going to change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. That's in our output properties. Change the end frame to 300. Change the file output to wherever you want it to be. Format is going to be FFmpeg video. The encoding has to be changed from Matroska to MPEG4 and the output quality is going to be perceptually lossless. With that done, you can also set your render defaults, which in this case, we're just going to use Bloom and nothing else. So with that, you can rebake the animation and you're good to start off with the texturing. So the texturing is going to be very simple. You can select the original Icosphere that you had, go to object and click shade smooth. After which go to the material properties, add in a new material and just press this principal BSDF and change it from principal BSDF to emission. And then just give the color maybe some goldenish color, just like that. It's really up to you to decide what you want. And along with that, increase the strength maybe to something like five. That just gives it a nice blue. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and hide the icosphere from the viewport as well as the renders by pressing these two buttons. Then we can take our camera and actually start the animation. So to do that, we'll press Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation. Then press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we'll grab it on the Z axis to just move it up and then press G Y to bring it back. Once we're done with that, we'll press Shift A and add in an empty plane axis, which will act as the controller for our camera. So let's select our camera, press zero to go into the camera view, just to make sure that 2024 is seen well enough. If you feel like it's too far away, you can always grab it on the Y and just move it further back or closer, but I'll go with this for now. And then with the camera selected, shift select the empty and then press control P set parent to object. Now, since this is the absolute end, we're gonna to go to frame 260, let's say, and select our camera and press I, location, rotation, and scale. Then we can go back to frame zero and just grab it on the Z axis and bring it down to zero, which is where our particles are initially going to start emitting from. And then press I, location, rotation, and scale. So right now we have an animation where the camera also starts from zero and slowly lifts up. We want it to go up much faster initially and then slow down later on. So to change that, you can just increase the timeline a little bit, change it from the timeline to the graph editor, choose just this Z axis bar, because that's the one that has been animated. We'll select the one on the right and just press S and scale it up. So that way it's actually gonna still start off smooth, but it's gonna speed up much faster and then slow down later on. Apart from that, we want it to also go all the way around. And that is what we're going to use our controller for. So we select the empty, go back to frame zero, press I, location, rotation, and scale, and then go again to somewhere like frame 250, and then just rotate it on the Z axis by 360 degrees, and then press I, location, rotation, and scale. Now you could make this linear, you could keep it as Bezier, I'll keep it as Bezier, and that's essentially how it's happening. I don't want to see anything outside my camera view. So I'll select my camera again, go down to viewport display and change passport out all the way to one. And then I'll go to the world properties and change the background color all the way to black. Switch off overlays. And that is the animation that I have. If you're happy with the animation, you can go ahead and press render animation. Otherwise you can make your changes and eventually render it out. And this is what my final render looks like. I hope you guys learned something from this particular video and you can use it to show your creativity and make various different types of animations using curves, logos, or just text, however you please. Remember, if you want to play around with this particular blend file, you can find it on my Patreon. I'm going to be releasing every single blend file in a week at once on Patreon, along with videos, the actual animations and wallpapers as well. So I hope you all find that useful. And until the next video comes out, which is going to be tomorrow, don't forget to stay creative.